Good morning, everyone. The intentions for Holy Mass this morning in reparation for the outrages and sacrileges committed throughout the world, for world peace, especially between Russia and the Ukraine, for Pope Francis, all bishops and priests, for Simon Norton, Jonathan Lurie, and all those recommended to our prayers, and for the repose of the soul of Lily Penas, our deceased relatives, friends, and benefactors, for the souls in purgatory, for the conversion of sinners and the reign of God's kingdom on earth. It's the first Friday of the month. O God, save me by your name, by your power, defend my cause. O God, hear my prayer, give ear to the words of my mouth. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. And with your spirit. To prepare ourselves to celebrate, let us first repent. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who have prepared fitting helps for us in our weakness, grant, we pray, that we may receive their healing effects with joy and reflect them in a holy way of life. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever, A reading from the Book of Wisdom. Ungodly men reasoned unsoundly, saying to themselves, Let us lie in wait for the righteous man, because he is inconvenient to us and opposes our actions. He reproaches us for sins against the law and accuses us of sins against our training. He professes to have knowledge of God and calls himself a child of the Lord. He became to us a reproof of our thoughts. The very sight of him is a burden to us because his manner of life is unlike that of others and his ways are strange. We are considered by him as something base and he avoids our ways as unclean. He calls the last end of the righteous happy and boasts that God is his father. Let us see if his words are true and let us test what will happen at the end of his life. For if the righteous man is God's son, he will help him and will deliver him from the hand of his adversaries. Let us test him with insult and torture that we may find out how gentle he is and make trial of his forbearance. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to what he says, he will be protected. Thus they reasoned, but they were led astray, for their wickedness blinded them, and they did not know the secret purposes of God nor hope for the wages of holiness, nor discern the price for blameless souls. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Lord turns his face against the wicked to destroy their remembrance from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears and rescues them in all their distress. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. Those whose spirit is crushed, he will save. Many are the trials of the just man, but from them all the Lord will rescue him. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. He will keep guard over all his bones. Not one of his bones shall be broken. The Lord ransoms the souls of his servants. All who trust in him shall not be condemned. The Lord is close to the broken hearted. Glory and praise to you, O Christ. <coughs> Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Glory and, and praise, praise to you, O Christ. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus went about in Galilee, but he would not go about in Judea because the Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews' festival of tabernacles was at hand. But after his brethren had gone up to the feast, then he also went up, not publicly, but in private. Some of the people of Jerusalem therefore said, Is not this the man whom they seek to kill? And here he is, speaking openly, and they say nothing to him. Can it be that the authorities really know that this is the Christ. Yet we know where this man comes from. And when Christ appears, no one will know where he comes from. So Jesus proclaimed as he taught in the temple, you know me and you know where I come from, but I have not come of my own accord. He who sent me is true, and him you do not know. I know him, for I come from him, and he sent me. So they sought to arrest him. But no one laid hands on him, because his hour had not yet come. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise so the church guides us from the discussions and so sort of semi trial of Jesus in chapter 5 now to chapter 7, another occasion later than that confrontation with the Pharisees. And now it's more a confrontation with the ordinary people of Jerusalem. And so the ordinary people are very confused. They, they know Jesus came from Nazareth, he was known as Jesus of Nazareth, and they also had heard that when the Messiah comes, he will come suddenly, that was the belief, he will come, as it were, out of nowhere. No one will know him or know anything about him. So they thought they therefore knew it all. But they were confused because 
They had heard that Jesus had been on a sort of trial uh, before the Sanhedrin in chapter 5. But here he was now, back in Jerusalem, and the Pharisees weren't bothering with him at all. So they were very confused and puzzled. They knew him, and yet they did not know him, knowing and partly knowing. And they were also had this fixed idea that the Messiah would be a liberator, that he would set them free from the oppression of the forces of occupation, the Romans. And this man was a million miles away from starting a political revolt. They had no notion that the language of the suffering servant in Isaiah was the clue to the identity of the Messiah and to the identity of Jesus. But at this stage in the proceedings, his hour had not yet come. We've heard this reference to his hour right from the start of his ministry and in John's Gospel in particular in the story of Cana, the changing of the water into wine. My hour has not yet come. And even during the ministry, the hour will come. And now the hour is drawing close, but it has not yet come. And this scenario of confusion and of waiting for the revelation about the true nature of the Messiah and who the Messiah is causes the same confusion in many people today. Many people claim to know Jesus. Some places more than others, there are little churches everywhere, every street corner. We've got a lot of them here in Cape Town. But I remember being in Lagos where you couldn't walk a uh, hundred yards without finding some kind of Christian group, some kind of little church. And we all think now, in the 21st century, we know who Jesus is. We know him. Indeed, we do know a great deal about Jesus, but it's knowledge about him. And it's not the kind of knowledge that is salvific. The kind of knowledge that we need and we want is existential knowledge, real, actual, knowing the person. So all of us uh, knew something about Mandela. He was the president of the country and he's known all over the world. But I doubt if any of us actually knew him, even met him. But to know a person is a different story altogether. What they're like, what their mind is, what their thoughts are, what they say in private, what they really think. This is a journey of discovery. And for us, it's a joyful journey, even in Lent, to get to know Jesus. And today, on this first Friday, get to know something about his heart, his beating heart, his living heart. Today, we don't see him. We don't physically hear him. But we are in contact with him through the sacraments, through our prayer, through his presence. And so we give thanks and pray to get to know him more and more closely 
every day. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. So let us pray that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the grace and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of the whole of the Church. May this sacrifice, Almighty God, cleanse us by its mighty power and lead us to approach its source with ever greater purity through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, for you will that our self-denial should give you thanks, our humble, humble our sinful pride, contribute to the feeding of the poor, and so help us imitate you in your kindness. And so we glorify you with countless angels as with one voice of praise, we acclaim. Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest.
You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, like the dew fall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Stephen, our Bishop, Sylvester, his auxiliary, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, 
All glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in the words of Jesus, we have the courage to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
the body of Christ. 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 Amen. The body of Christ. In Christ we have redemption by his blood and forgiveness of our sins in accord with the riches of his grace.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, O Lord, that as we pass from old to new, so with former ways left behind, we may be renewed in holiness of mind through Christ our Lord. Amen. Look upon your servants, O Lord, and in your goodness protect with heavenly assistance those who trust in your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in the day of battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, o Prince of the heavenly hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who wander through the world for the ruin of souls. Amen. Amen.